Okay, first up that I'm going to talk about is The Bird King by Sean Tan. Sean Tan is one of my favorite artists. He works predominantly in uh, traditional media and kid lit, but he does picture books that could be for adults or for kids. This one right here is kind of his artist sketchbook. So there's, he's done more than one or one, more than one art book. And this is just, uh, just kind of a beautiful introduction where you get to see some of the behind the scenes work, some of his basically trying stuff out, seeing how it looks. And yeah, it's just an amazing, when you get to flip through it and see some of his ideas, it's, it's, it's just amazing. Like some of it is a uh, very fantasy and sci-fi focus, but it's all grounded in reality. And if you've ever seen any of his, his stories, like The Arrival, or the red tree, the they're all beautifully rendered. I think mixed media oil, but yeah, Sean Tan's sketchbook is um, really awesome. It's worth checking out. All right, this is the artwork of Elizabeth Catlett. She's a, a, a black artist, printmaker, painter, sculptor. And I found out about her by visiting the Museum of uh, African Diaspora in San Francisco and this book in particular is a lot of her um, her lino cuts and her her um, prints. She was um, a really incredible artist, and I love seeing the the graphic work of her her prints. And maybe some of these are wood cuts too. We have linoleum cut. She's a really beautiful artist, and I wish more people knew about her work. She's from the United States, but uh, married a Mexican man and lived in Mexico, I think until she died. She's, this is the one that's on the cover. Just so much beauty and detail in her, her cuts and her plates. This one I love too, seeing these two. You can tell they're Mexicanos. I love this as well. This is like a lithograph. It's kind of like really, almost looks like a charcoal drawing. But yeah, this is for a, a gallery show, I believe, Elizabeth Catlett. This is an art book by an artist named uh, Travis Millard Fudge. I traded zines with him a long time ago and always really dug his work. He's um, sometimes it's really beautiful, sometimes it's crude, but he he does comics, he does illustration. This one he did about Michael Jackson and Bubbles. Um, he does these really funny, sometimes crude drawings of people. <laughs> a lot of cool characters. Like this one is a dude with no pants just walking around with his thing out. Um, he's done art shows, design for people's album covers, all types of things. But it's something about his like his characters, uh, it's like black and white ink, the simplicity of it. I always really, really dug about his work. He'll do some color too, but he'll do these where it's like a little bit grotesque, a little bit of fighting, a little bit of like exaggerated, but they're just really dope characters. He does all these funny little ink drawings of different things, like broken wrists, skateboard, mocos, skating burns yeah he's i think he did a whole lot of zine work and then ended up compiling it into one book i love seeing his illustration when i got a zine it came in an envelope like that from him yeah check out fudge travis miller all right so here's a book uh, showcasing some of the, the fashion of uh, the, our elders in the Chinese community. Um, this woman, Andrea Lowe, photographed my wedding. She's a really dope photographer. And I love this book. It's called Chinatown Pretty. And in it, they basically go, I think it's mostly in California, but maybe some in New York as well. They go to different areas and just photograph the sights and sounds of the people and definitely you get to see their fashion. I mean, like, 
a lot of people um, in the fashion industry, you know, probably bite some of this or steal a little bit of that, but like, it's really dope just to see how they layer themselves, especially in uh, colder cities like San Francisco. Gotta have lots of layers. But it's just cool to see them rocking their, their colors and their outfits. And some of it maybe from a, a, a store that they bought and sometimes it's, you know, secondhand or passed down. And sometimes they actually make it themselves. I mean, it's, yeah, it's really beautiful to see all the different styles. Some of them, you know, they, they're not trying to style, they just are stylish. Um, and then occasionally you'll see someone who, like this woman right here in San Francisco, she actually makes her clothes. So you get to see some of the stuff that she makes. Like this one, this is like a big rice bag and she made this out of that. So it's, it's dope just to read the, the commentary and the interviews and a little bit about their life. Here's some pictures from Oakland, Chinatown, Oakland where I'm from. And I love seeing the styles. It's one of them things where like you grow up and you like, oh man, the the old ladies or the old dudes really got style. Someone should do something about that. And this is before like humans in New York. I was thinking that and it's just really dope to see this as a book. So here we go, LA. So much color. Yeah, like this, like this is really cool seeing there. The yellow. Yeah, here we go, Manhattan, Chinatown. Yeah, it's really dope for fashion sense and fashion love. Chinatown pretty. Next up is the work of Barry McGee. So I grew up as a graffiti kid and I knew him as Twist, which so many people did. And this is a uh, an art book. I'm not sure if this was for a, a gallery show or what, but it has a lot of old photographs in it. Him and his, his partner, homies. It's a beautiful, small book. You see some of this bombing in San Francisco. And then you got you start to see some of the artwork that he did for his show in Berkeley, California. I'm not sure if there were work from other shows, but this is definitely from Berkeley. And he's got this an interesting mixture of graph patterns, ephemera, and he had these sculptures of people who were bombing at the show. These are from some of his earlier Yerba Buena uh, gallery show works. As a kid, I remember going to go see this in San Francisco, or as a young man, I should say. These are definitely from San Francisco. Some beautiful gallery pieces. And he, when he does his gallery shows, you get to see he has um, a jacket that was this one right here that's fitted for spray paint. So there's like tons of pockets in it for bombing. And yeah, there's like a little bit of uh, street work in here gallery work in here. This is a really inspiring book if you do public art or graph or even if you do design and you're looking for something different. Um, this is a really beautiful book. There's some train graffiti right here. More stuff from his gallery shows which like I said they have um, paintings and so much more encompassed in them but um, yeah check this out. This is um, Barry McGee or Twist as we called them. It's a really dope book. Okay, so here is the art of Kiki's Delivery Service. So Kiki's Delivery Service is an animated film by Studio Ghibli, directed by Hayao Miyazaki, the great Hayao Miyazaki. And he, just about every film has an art of book, just like Home. It's really dope to see um, the studio where they work their photographs that they take. I mean, this one in particular, Kiki is about a young witch who, she's in like a, a fictional European city and she's basically going out on her own. And in the art of book, you get some background about the story, the concept, the studio, the different artists who worked on the film. These are like, I think these are Hayao's work. He works in watercolor and pencil a lot. He does these beautiful concepts and these are like 
actual still shots from the film concept. The paintings that they do uh, for the background are just incredible. I wanna say that they use gouache, but they're always so beautiful, especially next to the cell 2D animated characters. Yeah, I love looking at the the paintings that they do. It's really inspiring. The I mean it's it's cartoonish, it's you know it's imaginative, but it's grounded in such reality. And that goes for the characters as well. Yeah, there's a cat Gigi that talks. Yeah, Kiki, she's a witch. Um it's going off on her own to basically learn how to be a young woman. I love it. It's, it's a beautiful story. I love most of the Ghibli films, but this is one of my favorite that I can actually watch with my daughter because it's, it's not too scary. There's little bits of San Francisco where the Bay Area where I'm from in it. You see like the cable cars and the clock tower. There's a lot of European influence mixed with Japanese as well. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really dope to see the the drawings, the watercolors, the gouache, all of the work that goes into making these films so great. And like I said, most of his, his many, many, many Ghibli films, most of them will have an art book so you can kind of see the how they did it. Yes, this is a dope book by uh, Charlie Ahern and uh, Jim Frigg. Um, they're, I know Charlie from the, the film, I believe it was Style Wars. Um, this is a dope book because it has some of the earliest photographs of some of the pioneers and progenitors of hip hop. And it, it goes from borough to borough and year to year. You'll have commentary from different figures within the, the culture paired with photographs. And it's just, I, I read it many, many years ago, but being that it's the 50th anniversary, this is one of those books worth checking out because it's just, it's got so much, like, look at that. It's like old black books, old black book artwork, um, old flyers. You get to see flyers from the old jams. Really beautiful seeing all the flyers and the pictures and these people who, have, who made, you know, something out of nothing. We'll talk about Herc and Bambada, Flash, so many people. Well, the thing I love personally about it, besides like seeing the photographs and hearing the commentary from the, from the horse's mouth, from the actual people was um, seeing all the flyers. I've just seen how these kids basically were putting on these, these parties and it really started as like a black and Latino multicultural group of kids who made something out of nothing. Here goes Ken Swift. Here he goes again. Talks about the blackout in the 70s, how a lot of people came up on their, their equipment. I just love seeing all these photographs. I, I grew up loving hip hop music and its culture, even though there's a dispute between the different facets, whether you're a writer or a b-boy or whatever. Um, I love all the facets. This right here was one by Buddy Esquire and man, just the design and the, the beauty of his like flyers is just so ill. Seeing like how they used to put together their routines and just dress really fly, like have the same outfits. I love seeing this stuff. And there's many, many hip hop books, you know, kind of documenting stuff from back then. Jamel Shabazz is one who's done a lot of great books that I'll talk about in the future. But um, yeah, check out this one. There's some scenes from films as well. Yeah, yes, yes, y'all. All right, this one is from the, the film Home. This is based on a book by Adam Rex called, uh, I think it was Smek Day. And this is Tip and this is O and these are really funny characters. Really cool film. I've watched it with my daughter a million times and it's just really dope to see a young black woman with curly hair um, as the main protagonist. 
And as with most art of animation books, what you get when you look inside these are um, elements of character design, production design, background design, sometimes uh, character design and storyboard, and these color scripts. It's just really awesome to see. And in this one in particular, it's really cool because they have like different shapes for it. It's really awesome to see just how many people and how much work go into making, taking what was already a, a funny book, Adam Rex is, has a really cool sense of humor and making it into um, an awesome film because the, the film is, is still pretty good. It's one of my favorite DreamWorks films. And I love looking through and seeing the character design, especially for young artists. If you want to get into the animation field, it's one, it's really dope to see a young black girl depicted in these stories, but also to like get some of the, the details of like how, how many people are involved in this. What does it take to do this? And to see these drawings, to see some of the behind the scenes really brings it home that this is something people do. This is their job. It's what they do for a living. You see some of these storyboards. This is like some concepts of a room, all the characters the vehicles. This is the, the car that uh, O turns, takes all of this stuff and turns it from a regular car into a flying car. It's pretty funny. But I, I love looking at art of animation books just to see just a huge uh, Herculean feat of all these creative minds coming together to make something like a tangible story come to life. And in the film, it's voiced by Jim Parsons and uh, Rihanna, which is also really cool. They make a really good, hilarious team. Steve Martin as well. Yeah, check the, if you haven't watched the film, watch it. If you have any young ones that are interested in animation, yeah, show them this book, The Art of Home. Okay, this is a book about uh, an organization called La Cocina. Basically what this is, is a nonprofit organization, I believe that will take people who have um, cooking businesses in mind, uh, restaurants, pop-ups, things of that nature, and basically give them information, mentorship. So here's some of, the, some of the folks in here. And uh, funding, space, and this program is revolutionary in that more women, particularly and more women of color, being able to begin and run and successfully keep their food businesses open, restaurants and whatnot. And yeah, it's revolutionary in that sense because it's hard to run a, a restaurant or a food business unless you have a lot of money and a lot of backing behind you. And so in this book, what, basically what you see is women from different backgrounds you'll have like a picture of them, a recipe, and maybe just a little bit about who they are, why they make what they make. And I just love it because it's, it's, I mean, this organization is in San Francisco and in like the Mission District in San Francisco has so many different types of people. You have like a, a richness of culture and through the food. So I think it's really dope for Young chefs, if they want to check this out, photographers, designers. It's a really, really beautifully done book. Love the pictures, love their mission statement. And I love just hearing their stories. Like some of them are from the Bay Area, some of them are from Central California, they're from all over. There it is. This is my friend Reem with her baby. And she started a restaurant in the San Francisco first as a pop-up, then uh, a brick and mortar place in Oakland that I helped paint a mural on. And then now she's in San Francisco. So check this out, La Cocina. All right, this is a new one. I haven't actually read this one yet, but um, it's called Movie Storyboards. And I've been just studying storyboards a little bit, taking some classes and through taking classes, come to really 
appreciate and understand just how hard it is to make a narrative film or a commercial or a TV show or an animated show good. Not even make it great, just to make it good. And in this book, it was written by uh, Fionnuala Halligan. You get to see kind of the evolution of storyboards from back in the 30s with like Hitchcock and other people to now. And there are lots of different types of storyboards. There's what you call beat boards where they take several key moments. Like this is a Hitchcock storyboards right here. They take several um, beats and like key points of the film and like draw it out so that the the director, director of photography or the animator kind of has something to work with. And, and then there are uh, the other storyboards where they, they get a little bit more detail for like film and TV to kind of give the costume department something to work with. But it's really incredible to see, basically when you're doing a storyboard, this is from Apocalypse Now, when you're doing a storyboard, you're this is from Star Wars, you're drawing it on paper before you actually animate it or shoot it or film it. And that tells you a lot about what kind of camera you're gonna need, what kind of lenses you'll need, um, what the characters are gonna look like, what are they wearing, what locations, where do you have to go? If you need special effects, how's that gonna be done? Here's from Raiders of the Lost Ark. And a good storyboard artist is almost like a director before a director because they will basically, through uh, sequential images, they will help you get a feeling like it'll make you scared or it will make you happy or it will make you anxious or it will make you curious. Like through the this incredible skill, this is from, um, I think, Argman, Stop Motion, Anim Motion Animated Film through the use of storyboards and using them properly in film, they really do help to convey an emotion. This is from Old Boy, a Japanese film. So for any of those young artists out there who wanna get into animation or film, story artists or storyboard artists um, are really pivotal and important in all visual storytelling if it's tv or commercials or film and it is such such an underappreciated and underrated skill because it is not easy it is not just drawing a picture y'all it is really tough so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into this one more all right this is marvelocity uh, this is a marvel comics artwork of uh, alex ross alex ross is a painter who does the bulk of his work is traditional and it's done for for comics, for comic book covers. Sometimes he'll do the comics inside as well, but he paints, he's an incredible painter. And this book, basically he talks about, um, he's been a, a, a lifelong artist, an artist for, for forever. So you get to see some of his kid drawings and some of his work as an adult. And I love the pairings of the two. Seeing, um, this is him right here. Seeing his process and seeing his evolution and he's he's got like an incredible he uses lots of, of photo reference models he models himself but I mean like look at this for example like this is a drawing he did when he was a kid and this is how he paints now and as an adult and it's just it's just an incredible artist incredible here's his sculpture of this superhero and then like an actual painting He's got so much uh, love and enthusiasm and passion for depicting superheroes. Um, I would say some of it is realistic, but I would say it's just really eye-catching and imaginative and lifelike. And you know, here's an example of him posing with, next to a panel from a comic page that he did. But I love watching his YouTube channel and watching his videos where he talks about his work. I love seeing just the the level of detail that he gets. And I, I, I think he paints with acrylic. I'm not sure if he does or not, but it's beautiful, beautiful work that he does. It's really awesome seeing how he takes, you know, what could be just any old, you know, a photograph of someone dressed up as a superhero and just makes it magnificent 
I mean, like, look at this. This is just the contrast, the emotion, the lighting, the colors. It's really amazing what he pulls off. And he does, I think he's a mostly stay at home type of dude. Stays out the way, but his YouTube channel is, is popping. And he, you know, like, look at this right here. Like, he puts a red light on his models and then paints them this way in the composition together. Which is gorgeous, gorgeous work. He'll, he'll have someone, I think, sell for him or post up and sell some of his originals or prints or art books at uh, some of the conferences. But yeah, I, I love looking at, it gets me really inspired seeing his choice of color and his composition and all that stuff. Yeah, Alex Ross. Such an a in-depth knowledge of all the superheroes too. Oh, look at this one here, Storms. So, Doctor Strange. Yeah, Alex Ross is, is dope. All right, I mentioned this before in the last video, but I'm gonna keep mentioning it because this is my art book. And if you like these videos, you dig them, share them with your friends, share them with the uh, students. And if you like to, you can get this art book from me. It's called Art of Rob. It's basically my sketchbook, lettering, um, portraits, all types of illustrations for Black History Month, Women's History Month and sketchbook like there's a bunch of actual pages for my sketchbook i'm not going to show you the whole thing but this is this is my work so if you get a chance check it out art of rob it's 130 pages and even in the back there's um there's a little bit of tutorial so check it out thanks so much for watching